If you've ever tried to install something globally on Linux with NPM, I guarantee that you've seen this screen right here. So what this is saying is that you don't have permission to actually install a file to this directory right here. And the reason why this is happening is to do with your package manager. So when you go and install something with your package manager, what do you have to do? You have to give the package manager root access, and that's fine for the most part. You want your package manager to have root access, it needs to be able to do that. But when you install NPM with root access, what happens is that NPM now requires root access to do every single operation that it needs to do. Now, one of the fixes is obviously to go and install NPM without using your package manager, but you don't necessarily have to do that. I'm going to show you one method that does do that, but the most of them you don't have to do that. So the reason why this is a problem is because of what you're going to do is you're going to have JavaScript code with administrative access to your system, which is fine most of the time until it isn't. So say you install a package that is a Bitcoin miner or some other malicious bit of code, and now you've just given it administrative access to your system. And the problem with JavaScript is everything is done through libraries that call libraries that call libraries that call libraries. That call libraries. And the dependency chain is absolutely massive. So trying to keep track of this yourself is going to be a nightmare. So it's better to just not give administrative access to this code if you don't know what it is. So today what we're going to do is look over a couple of ways to fix this. The first solution we're going to look at probably won't fix it in most cases, but in some it actually will. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this command right here. So sudo own. So we're going to change the ownership of something and we're going to set it to my current user. So in that case, we can just do who am I? And what we're going to do is change the ownership of the .npm directory. So the .npm directory is a folder that's created in your home that npm can access. The problem is though, even if we do run this, most of the time, this isn't actually the problem that we were actually facing. So as we saw, we were trying to install something to slash user slash lib, not to the npm directory. So even if we try to run this again now, it's not actually going to work. As I said, in some instances, this may actually fix it, but most of the time, this isn't going to be a package manager related problem. Okay, so the first actual fix is going to be changing where our global NPM packages are actually being installed to. So normally what you'd need is permission to access slash user slash lib slash node modules. But if we just move that path into being in my home directory, well, we don't need any extra permissions, do we? So what we're going to do in here is we're going to run make dir, and we don't have to call it .npm-global. I've made a dot directory so it doesn't show up in things like ls, and it's basically treated the same way as a hidden file, and I've called it npm-global just because that's a pretty descriptive name for it, but you don't have to call it that. You can call it literally anything else you want. So if we go and make this folder now, what we're going to do is change our npm prefix. So if we go and run npm config, and let's just see where it's actually being set to right now. So if we just check what the prefix is, as you can see, the prefix is slash user, and my current user doesn't have write access on that directory, so that's gonna be a bit of a problem. So if we just move that into the home, less of a problem now. So instead of doing get, what we're gonna do instead is run set prefix, and set prefix is obviously gonna let you set what the value is, and we're going to set the prefix to be that directory we just made before. So in this case, that would be home.npm-global. And obviously, remember to close your quote marks. And there we go. Okay, so now the prefix is set, but we won't actually be able to execute anything that's actually located in that directory. So what we need to do is also add that into our path. And the way that we do that is by editing our path variable. So what we need to do is add this line into either our zsh emp file or our bash profile. Now, some people do their path in their bash rc. I would recommend it being inside your bash profile though, just so it's not being run every time you open up a new shell. So if you go and either execute this command or add it into your bash profile, if you execute it, it's just going to work inside of this specific shell instance. If you add it to that configuration file, it's going to make it so it's always being set. So I'm just going to run it temporarily for now. So we just press enter on this and now that's being run. And let's go and actually npm install something. So npm install dash g and let's install jshint. 
and we give that a second to go. And as you're going to see, this is actually going to work this time. And then if we try to just execute JS hint, as you're going to see, it's perfectly executable. So that seems to be working exactly as we would expect. Now, I did mention you should probably put this into your profile file. So if we go and copy that now and go into my ZSH env. Now I've got mine formatted slightly differently. I've got mine set up in the ZSH way, but it works in pretty much the same way. I can go and just edit the path variable after it, or you can go and add this into your existing path variable, whatever it is that you want to actually do. I would recommend adding it into your existing one just so you don't have two places that you're actually setting the variable. And once you do set the variable, all you need to do is just resource that file. So in this case, that would be source.zshemp. And then that is gonna be working. Now, there is one other environment variable we can actually do. So if you don't wanna go and set the config prefix with that command, what you can do is just set the environment variable for that value. So if we go back into the zshemp file, so zshemp, and what we do is we go export npm underscore config underscore prefix and then we just set it to that directory we just had before so in this case we're going to set it to home slash dot npm dash global that is going to be doing the exact same thing as that npm config set line so either way is going to work whichever one you prefer actually doing so after all of this you should have a perfectly working node set up now i'm going to go and break it again just so i can show you the second version Okay, so now that it's back to being broken, the second thing we can do is use a script called NVM. So what NVM is, is basically the node version manager. So basically, I guess you can think of it as a package manager for your package manager. So what this is going to do is let you maintain multiple installs of node at the same time. Now, I'm only using one of them, but if you want to maintain multiple at the same time, this is one way you could go about doing that. And this is available in the AUR, but if you want to go and install it manually, come check out the GitHub page and there should be instructions on here somewhere. Here you go. So you can see how to install that manually, but I'm going to install it from the AUR. So if I just do yay dash s and we install NVM, give that a second to go. Now it's going to prompt me for which one I want to install. In this case, I'll just install the first one. No, I don't want a clean build. No, I don't want diffs to show. Give it a second to go and download. And there we go. Okay, so when you go and install this, the first thing you're going to need to do is add a line into your bash RC or your ZSHRC. Now, if you're using fish, basically just go and modify this line to work inside of fish. Basically what it's gonna do is just source a file. So if I just run this line here, so copy this and then go and paste this. Basically it's just gonna add a line into the end of my ZSHRC. So if I just go and look at that now, and we go down to the bottom, as you're gonna see, sourcing that file right here. Okay, cool, so I'll just open up a new terminal and then restart that. Okay, so if we just go and run sudo pacman or whatever the equivalent on your distro actually is, dash rcns to uninstall it and uninstall npm. And just, yes, we don't need it anymore. Okay, so we try to run npm now. As you're gonna see, we don't actually have the package installed. So what we need to do is go and install it with NVM instead. So if we do NVM install node, it's going to try to install whatever the latest version of node actually is. If you want to install an older version, you can go and do that, but that's not the point of today's video. So because we actually went and messed with the prefix earlier, what you're gonna to need to do is go and actually update the prefix again. So normally you wouldn't have to go and do this, but because we were messing with it, we do have to do it. So if I just copy this command and paste that in here, so nvm use dash dash delete dash prefix for this specific version right here, press enter, go and delete that. Okay, so let's just try to install node again, just to make sure it definitely did get installed. So it is already installed, now using node 14.6.0 as my current version, okay. That seems to be working. So let's try to just install something now. So npm install dash g and let's install prettier this time. Just worked. That's all you have to do. So nvm is a really simple way to fix this. The only problem with using nvm is now npm and all of your node packages aren't actually being maintained by your package manager which can be a problem. So this means that you have to use NVM if you want to go and update node or update NPM, which isn't 
technically a problem. I guess it, it can be a problem in some situations. If you always want to be on the cutting edge of what Node actually has, you have to make sure that you go and update it separately from the rest of your packages. Usually that's not the case. Usually you want to develop four stable versions. So in that case, it's actually better to be doing it like this. But if you do need those cutting edge packages, you do have to remember to manually update it yourself by using NVM instead. And if you want to go and uninstall NVM and NPM, it's a bit of a hassle because when NVM only has one version of Node available, it won't let you uninstall it. So to actually uninstall NVM, what you have to do first, actually just get rid of NVM. So if we just do sudo pacman-rcns and just uninstall NVM, go and delete that. Now we still actually have some stuff in our RC file and we still have NPM technically installed. So to get rid of NPM, all we have to do is just get rid of the NVM folder because it's just been installed in this directory right here. So we can just uninstall that. And also we need to go and modify our ZSHRC file. So just go down to the bottom of this. Don't worry about the error message right here. My version of Vim actually just requires some uh, node stuff. Anyway, if we go down to the bottom and just delete this line right here. Now we're actually back in a state where we've gone and actually uninstalled it. So it's a little bit of a hassle, but normally you're not really gonna have to uninstall NVM. So it's not really that big of a deal. And the last method I have is by just using the web installer of Node instead. So if we just go and run this command right here, so copy that over. If we just run this curl command right here, what this is gonna do is just do the web installation of Node instead of just doing it through your package manager. Now, the reason why I wouldn't recommend this is because at least with NVM, you have some sort of package manager. Now, it's not your regular system package manager, it's NVM itself being the package manager, but it's still a package manager. This method right here, you're gonna have to go and manually update it yourself every single time you wanna update it. And that kind of removes some of the convenience of actually using Linux. But if you do wanna do this, then you can. So what we're doing is we're basically just downloading a script from this link right here and then piping it into bash. So if I just run enter on this, give it a second, what it's gonna do is try and install node. So as you saw, it downloaded it to my downloads directory, then it went and installed it to the .local directory. And now what you have to do is just go and add this into your path, just so you can actually make it so everything installed into the .local slash bin is actually executable. So actually, both of these you need to add. So copy these, and if we just go and paste this, and then run it. Okay, now if we actually try to install something like this, so npm install dash g prettier, as you're going to see, that actually did work as well. And all of the files are being installed to my dot local directory. So if we go and look at that, so that'll be, why didn't I just search that dot local? And as you can see, WebI is located in here. So obviously this does work as a method. I wouldn't recommend this method though, just because it's gonna be really annoying to uninstall NPM. It's gonna be really annoying to actually update it and you don't have a package manager actually maintaining it. Now the other method that a lot of people use is just not using NPM and using NPX instead. The problem with NPX though, is you have to install it with NPM. So you at least have to install one package by giving it root access to your system. So I'm not a big fan of that method. I'd much rather just make it so NPM isn't trying to install stuff to a place that I don't actually have access to. But if you wanna do that method instead, feel free to install the NPX package with NPM and just go ahead and do that. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to mention today. I would probably recommend either using the second method, so setting it so you have a different directory to actually install to, or using the NVM method. If you need to maintain multiple versions of Node, use the NVM method, it's gonna make it much easier. But if you just want the simple method where you don't have to install anything else besides what you already had installed, the second method is probably the best method to actually do. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Peter, D. Rode, Tony, Donald, John, Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to support the channel, there'll be some links down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links. We can buy the gear using this channel. 
or anything else you want. And I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a Tea available on Library, YouTube, and a bunch of other video platforms as well. And the audio version is available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember to go check it out on Library, BitChute, BitChute, and a bunch of other video platforms as well. Links down below. And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell down below as well. If you like the rambly videos, I'm also blogging on platforms like Minds and Read.Cash as well. So go check those out. I'm having a lot of fun with it and you might as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.